I... My name is Jane Elliott. Most of you probably don't know me because I'm only seven years and 11 months old, and um, I haven't been baptized yet. But I will be when I turn eight next month, and there will be Rice Krispie treats. Um, okay. Brothers and sisters, I would like to take this opportunity to bear my testimony. Um, I'm glad that I was born a Mormon. I mean, um, I'm glad that I was born into the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints. But, um, I'm not perfect. In fact, my mom says I'm kind of a perfectionist, like she is, and it seems to me like maybe perfect is kind of a dangerous word. But I believe that the way God loves me is perfect. And by being officially baptized into his church, I have the chance to be perfect, too. Until I mess things up. Um, but then if I keep trying to do right, then God will keep forgiving me. And so eventually, I guess I will be perfect. Or close enough. I don't really understand that part. Oh, uh, my grandma is waving at me that I should stop talking now. So, um, I say these things in the name of Jesus Christ, amen. Whenever I think about pioneers, I think of brave women and men. I like to remember that children came to. I would like to have been a child then. I'd like to have sung with the pioneers when voices rang out loud and strong. Well, hello there. Suppose I should be introducing myself. My name is Lizzie Ann Boyack, Edith Frances Harrison, Lena Sanderson, Hogan Haney, Williams, Elliot. How do you do? <laughs> Well, all right, I'm not an actual person. I'm more of a composite of my little Janie's pioneer ancestors. We're pulled straight from her family history. Even got the journals to prove it. For example, Anne Boyack from Scotland. I'm 19 years old, and I'll tell you a secret. My father's name is James. My brother's name is James, and one day, I'm going to marry a man named James. <laughs> and Edith Francis Harrison. I'm already 10 years old, and I've got eight brothers and sisters, including the lady of the family, my big sister, Mary Ann. But if you ask me, I think being a lady is a bit overrated. And Lena Sanderson, Mangatak from Denmark. Uh, I am 48 years old, and I am already married, but. Uh, my husband, Pedder, he cannot walk. Still, we wanted to make the trip to Utah. And as for me, well, let's just say I'm Lizzie from Ireland. So, I suppose you'll be wondering why then, why I've been conjured up here in all my imaginary glory. Well, I need you to understand. I need you to know how hard it was to pack just a few of my most prized possessions into my trunk and say goodbye to my home for forever. After that, I made my way by boat or train or ferry to what you would probably call the Midwest, but what I would call the edge of the world. From there, as Edith would say, it was 1,400 miles across the plains, and I walked almost the entire way, except for once when, Father, please, I know the oxen are tired, but my feet are killing me. Couldn't I ride in the wagon just for a bit? Thank you, Father! Yes! <laughs> so, Father, 
that the only reason all these engines are riding along with us lately is because they want to trade one of their finest ponies for Marianne! <laughs> what? They want to make Marianne the chief's wife? Our Marianne? Well, Father, I think maybe you ought to consider it. <laughs> of course, if I were the chief, I'd probably prefer to marry the pony, but ow! All right, Father, I'm walking! I'm walking! <laughs> but as Lena would say, some of us didn't walk. Some of us had to pull. that I'll actually send it, but I think you should know that I'm attracted to women. I mean, I'm attracted to men, too, still, very much. At first, I thought it was just admiration. I thought it wasn't that I wanted to be with certain women, it's that I wanted to be them, be like them. But now I think it's more than that. There is a girl in one of my honors classes, and she is just so smart and pretty and quiet. I think you'd really like her. And as I thought more and more about how I feel about her, I realized that I really like her. Like, like her, like her. It feels as strong as any crush I've ever had on a boy. I just can't stop thinking about her lips. And I know that this probably could have been avoided if I had just gone to BYU, and maybe I could have met some nice liberal Mormon boy, if they even exist, and we could have fought together for change within the church, like you did, like you do. And maybe that would have been, you know, perfect. But I didn't because I just felt that I couldn't. And you knew that. And you understood, and I love you for that more than I can possibly say. You are the ideal parents. 
ideal Mormons, ideal people. But you know that I have struggled with things in the church, and you have too, things like gay rights, and women's roles, and so I guess I just have to say that I am still a Mormon, but I don't know if I always will be. And I really hope that if I fall in love with a woman, that you'll accept her, even if I've disappointed you. I really don't want to disappoint you, Mom and Dad. I... Okay. The Lord gives us commandments and asks us to obey. Sometimes I am tempted to choose another way. When I'm discouraged and feel I cannot try, I will be courageous and I will reply. I will go, I will do the things the Lord commands. I had reached Utah, and I thought surely from here the journey would all be downhill. But the trek across the plains was only the first part of being a pioneer. Now sure, it wasn't all bad. There were moments of joy, like, oh, Peter, could you look at this sky? And the flowers, have you ever seen flowers like these? And this mountain air, oh, it's cool and crisp, like drinking clear water from a spring. This is our home now, Peter. Not Denmark, no, but, Zion. But as Edith would say, Zion also had grasshoppers. Grasshoppers by the ton. Please, Father, we've got to do something or else they'll eat everything we've grown. No, Father, it won't burn down the farm, I swear it. I have got the boys raking them off the crops. But now they're just lying there in great piles like this of ruddy insects. And who knows what will come out of the woods to eat them later. So please, Father, instead of doubting me like you always do, have a little faith. Help me to start this fire and let's save our bloody farm. Aye. When the grasshoppers came, the days were so full of smoke, you could not see the sky. But of all the hardships that we suffered, I think the one that mattered the most was, no, James, I tell you, I will not stand for it. I don't care if the prophet himself commanded it. I will not share you. And frankly, James, I cannot see why you'd want me to. Because I know I still please you, and you know it too. I'll stop you justifying. I know she's a widow. And I know she's got two children, and I know there's not enough men out here. But I think that's the Lord's problem. And polygamy is just you men's answer for it. So please, James, I am begging you here on my knees. If you love me, then... James. You are the patriarch of this family. I know that the Lord made it so. So, I will treat her children as my own. But if you are ever late for breakfast coming from her house, I will kill you with my own two hands. Beep! Hi, Jane. This is Julie Gunderson. I'm calling from the Astoria Second Ward. I just wanted to welcome you to New York and um, let you know that you can attend church with me. And we've got a lot of great singles events. Like this week, we have a cooking class. So, you know, just give me a call back. Oh, and one more thing, have a great day. Beep! Hi there, Julie. This is Jane Elliott, returning your call and wondering how in the hell you got my number, why in the hell I am on your list, and who in the hell told you that I moved to New York? But you know what? I don't want you to call me.
me back, and I don't want your welcome to New York because I have been living here for three years already, and it's none of your goddamn business. Ugh! Do you have any idea how many years of therapy it has taken me to recover from the psychological damage that growing up in the church did to me? I have no idea why I'm being so bitchy right now. Probably because it's 11.30 at night and I'm waiting for the fucking subway and I'm hungry and tired and cold and I know it's not your fault and I know I'm just some name on your list and I make calls like this too once upon a time but I swear to God! If I ever hear your fucking sweet, kind voice again, I will make this message sound like FUCKING CHRISTMAS MORNING! TAKE ME OFF YOUR LIST! Don't make me come to church and tell you myself. REVELATIONS, BITCH! REVELATIONS! Okay, bye. I believe in being honest. No. Because I have been given much, I too must give. Because of thy great bounty, Lord. No. Teach me to walk in the light of his love. Teach me to pray to my Father above. Teach me. <gasps> what the? Hello, my little Jane. Well, don't be afraid. It's just your Lizzie. I just figured as we've been sharing the stage a whole night, I have to come and say hello. Well, all right then. Suppose I'll go. No, wait. What is it, my little lass? You look exactly like me. <laughs> <laughs> well, yes. I thought that would have been obvious. We only exist now because of you, Jane. That is not true. There are so many records, hundreds of pages of journals and pictures and what are records if no one reads them? Isn't there something in each of us that wants to be remembered? Yeah. Lizzie, when I was a child, I thought that I would just die if I didn't become somehow perfect. No. Extraordinary. I love you, my little Jane. Now I just want to be good. To do right? Well, you're doing it right now. I don't know that, Lizzie. I made you. I am the one who wrote you saying that. <laughs> well, I suppose that means you believe it on some level, doesn't it? I don't know, Lizzie. I don't know what I believe. Well, of course you do. No, I don't, Lizzie. Do you have any idea how much there is to pick apart? We. We don't just have the Bible, we have three other holy books and a slew of white male prophets besides. Well, there's some that would call that a blessing. Lizzie, trying to carry all of that, all the teachings, all the contradictions, all your sacrifices, it is a load as heavy as the one you carried across the plains. Well, then put your shoulder to the wheel. I'm not a pioneer, Lizzie. I'm just trying to live a good life without any direction or with too much direction. What do you even want from me? You have to believe in happiness. It isn't an outward thing. The spring never makes the song, I guess. As much as the song, the spring, I Many a heart would find content if it found the joy on the path it went. Yes, the joy is there, though you have to grieve. Yes, the joy is there, but you have to believe. That's 
great grandpa's favorite poem, isn't it? I'm proud of you, Jane. Truly, I am. light shift, huh? <laughs> um, okay, I, I know that this sounds kind of weird, but um, I really feel that the only way I can actually close this piece is to say a prayer. So I'm not exactly sure uh, how to, whatever. <laughs> Let's go. Dear Heavenly Father, dear Jesus and the Holy Spirit, but just like not in a patriarchal way, <laughs> dear Allah and Buddha and Krishna and Karma, dear Goddess, the feminine and truth, light and honor, dear God, stuff and good stuff and whatever else fits, please just help me not to fuck up my shit. <laughs> okay, um, thank you for this opportunity to tell my family's story and my story too, and thank you for a family that has supported me in that and Thank you for the capacity to create art. In fact, thank you for all of these people here right now. Because without them, it wouldn't be art. Please bless them. Bless them with open minds and easy laughter and awesome beach bodies, please just <laughs> bless them and, and bless us all that today, whether it's this moment or not, that we will feel something that makes us seem and be extraordinary. Please bless them. Um, I think that's all I have time to say for now, so um, I say these things in the name of Jesus. I say these things in the name of God stuff and good stuff. In the name of all those who came before me and all those here with me right now. Amen.